everybody, welcome to another video. I hope you're ready to flex those brain muscles. Today we are going to expand some logarithmic expressions. So we're going to use properties of logarithms to take some single expression like this and expand it. So the instructions usually are something like this. Write each expression as a sum or difference of logs. Express any powers as factors. So these are not all the properties of logarithms, but these are the three main ones we use for problems like this. And again, this is just an expression. We're not solving for anything. We are just expanding this. But this is good practice because when we do solve logarithmic equations, we have to manipulate them a lot. We have to expand and condense them in order to set them up so we can solve them. So this is great practice. If you get this down and you learn how to use these properties of logs, then solving those equations will be easy for you. So let's go ahead and start. We have log base 2 of this x over y squared. So our base doesn't really matter in these problems. When we get to condensing, in order to combine these, the base has to be the same, but we don't really care what the base is as long as it's the same. In this case, we're expanding. So again, we're not worried about the base. What we are worried about is which property are we going to use to expand this. So the first thing I would do is separate it. Since we have division, I can rewrite this as log base 2 of x minus log base 2y squared. And now I just have one last step because again, it says express powers as factors. So this two can come out in front being multiplied to the log base two of y, right? This property right here. So I'm gonna bring that two out in front and that's actually gonna be my final expanded expression. So two times log base two to the y. All right, so we're gonna do a few more examples. Let's go ahead and expand this logarithmic expression. In this case, we have natural log, but again, that makes no difference to us. We're just expanding it. We don't care what the base is. So first thing I'm gonna do is notice that there's two things being multiplied in here. We have x times the square root of x squared plus one. So I can separate that and it becomes addition. So ln x plus ln, and again, this square root x squared plus one is all in this second ln. So now what? Well, what is square root really? Because you may think we're done, but this can actually be rewritten as a power, and we can bring our power out in front. Because that's what the instructions tell us to do, express powers as factors. So if we left it like this, we'd probably get points off. We'd get marked off on an exam or a quiz. So we need to rewrite this. What can we write square root as? Well, that's just one half power, right? And in general, any kind of roots you have can be rewritten as some kind of power. So I have x squared plus one to the one half power. Now my one half can come out in front and be expressed as a factor, right? I can have one half out here being multiplied to that ln x squared plus one. So my final expanded logarithmic expression is ln x plus one half ln x squared plus one. And again, we have addition in here. We cannot break this up. That's a big mistake. People will break that up again. You can't do it. Only multiplication, division, and power. So this is the final expanded form. All right, this is our last example. Let's just go ahead and jump right into a doozy. I encourage you to pause the video, try this on your own. This is about as tough as these get. So if you can do this, then you're probably good to go from here. So I'll go ahead and start. I have log, there's no base, so that's an implied 10. There's basically an invisible 10, right? So log base 10 of all this stuff. Up here, I have x minus four squared in the numerator. and the denominator, I have x squared minus one, and this whole thing is being raised to the third power. So I just gotta take one step at a time. First thing I'm gonna do is bring the three all the way out here in front. So three, and I'm gonna draw brackets here, okay? Because this is a big mistake that students make. This is probably the, the number one mistake I see with these problems. So I have x minus four up top squared over x squared minus one brackets. And the mistake is this three comes out, but this three applies to everything. So when I start breaking this stuff up, that three is gonna be multiplied to everything. All right, so just make sure you keep track of those brackets. So now I have division here. I can split this up, the top minus the bottom, right? So I'll draw a little arrow here, three times, and I'm keeping my brackets still, log x minus four squared 
minus log x squared minus 1, close brackets. All right, again, this 3 is being multiplied to everything. So I'm going to do two steps in once here. I think y'all can handle this, though. I'm bringing the 2 out in front, right? I'm using this property, bring the 2 out in front, and I'm going to distribute the 3 in. So that 2 times 3 becomes a 6. I have 6 log x minus 4. All right, 6 log x minus 4 minus, but that 3 comes in here as well, minus 3 times log x squared plus 1. 3 log x squared uh, minus 1, sorry. x squared minus 1. So a lot of students would put check, done, I've expanded it. I can't break these up because there's subtraction, but there's actually one trick you can do, okay? Because if you put check here, Depending on your instructor, you may get points taken off because you can break this up. If you notice what this is, this is actually a difference of squares. I can rewrite this as x minus 1 times x plus 1. So I can rewrite this as a product of two things, which means I can further split it up, right? Multiplication, I can split it up into more addition. And since the point is to fully expand this, I want to make sure I go ahead and factor this and expand it as much as I can. So I'm going to go ahead and do that step. I'll draw the arrow here. This is done. That stays the same. So that's 6 log x minus 4 is good. But now what am I doing here? Minus 3. I'm going to use my brackets again. Okay? Log. Well, actually, I don't need them yet because first I'm just factoring this. Just so everyone can see what's going on. So log uh, x minus 1 times x plus 1. Alright? This is what I really have in here. This whole thing is in the log. And again, these brackets are unnecessary. I was skipping ahead. So again, when I separate this, I can do addition. But that's why I was, I was thinking about the brackets already. Because when I do this addition, this negative 3 is going to go to both these. Right? So I just have to be careful of that. So again, I can write my 6 log x minus 4 here. That part is good. Minus. All right. Minus 3 times this log x plus 1. Minus 3 log x minus 1 technically is first, but either order. Minus 3 log x plus 1. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Basically, I did kind of two steps at once. I split this up. This was log x minus 1 plus log x plus 1 because I have multiplication. I can split it up into addition. And then this negative 3 distributed to everything. So the negative 3 went here as well as here. So this is good. This is my final expanded form of this logarithmic expression. If you would have stopped here, uh, you may have gotten some points taken off. So just be aware of that. This is a tricky problem. If you can do this, and you can do probably all these expansions easy. And this will be useful when we solve logarithmic equations. So I hope this video helped. If it did, hit like, hit subscribe, check out my channel if you need more help, and keep flexing those brain muscles. I'll see you in the next video.